we're at the uh, page 35b, and uh, we've been discussing the laws of reciting the bracha bari pri hagafen. Now, before we actually do that, I just want to go over the Gemara we learned yesterday uh, that we started with, and that was the Gemara about the difference between the previous generations and the later generations. So the Gemara had mentioned that the previous generations, it mentions two things. Uh, number one, it mentions about how they uh, used to uh, make their Torah study the Iker, the main thing, and their uh, work was considered like temporary or secondary. And uh, the uh, uh, and 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 they were they were successful. It worked out. The on the other hand, the um, the later generations they made the work their main thing. The Torah study was like pushed aside. It was secondary. It was, it was um, second class. And because of that, none of them really worked out. They, they weren't sustainable. They didn't. It, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't. It didn't work. It wasn't good. And uh, then the Gemara mentioned. Uh, from the same rabbi, Rabbi Rabbi Barbar Chana, in the name of Rabbi Yechanan, the name of Rabbi Huda Rabbi Loi, that uh, another another interesting uh, uh, fact, and that is that the previous generations they used to uh, bring their produce into the house the normal way, but the uh, the later generations they would find some loophole to be able to get around the uh, get around uh, giving tithing on their food that they would snack from. They had a loophole. They would take it through like a back door uh, through the roof. And uh, this way they were, they would f be able to exempt themselves a little from some of the, uh, some of the tithing. And th that's what the, uh, that's the story the Gemara brings about these two, uh, about this, uh, view of uh, compar comparing the, the contrast between the previous generations and the, and the later generations. And uh, I mentioned the thought that maybe the Gemara is telling us how important it is for us to make sure we teach the later generation what we're doing to clarify, communicate with the later generation because otherwise they're going to come up with their own understanding. They're going to think that maybe we didn't realize that there's an easy loophole. And we should tell them, we know about the loophole. We should tell them straight out, but we're not interested in the loophole. We are happy to give the miser and the truma. We're happy to separate our tithing and give it. There's no, there's, there, there's absolutely no, uh, no issue uh, with us. We, we know about the loophole and we still want to do it. We're happy to do it. We want to support the, the Levium, the Kayanim. And uh, we want to be able to do an extra mitzvah of separating. And the same thing is with the previous generation, the fact that they used to learn Torah, they have to tell that to their children, that even though I'm working all day, but you should know that my work is not what I really am. My mind is not fully uh, engrossed in my work. My mind is really all about Torah. My work is I have to do, I have to work. I have to make a living. I'm, I'm working, but this is not the main thing. The main thing in my mind is the Yiddishkeit and the Torah. And this, uh, we have to communicate to the later generation. Otherwise, they're going to see us working all day. They're going to think, oh, my parents worked all day. That was the main thing. Uh, my father worked all day. Uh, I'll also, I'm going to do the same thing. And, and uh, Torah, when, whenever there's free time, uh, then I'll consider learning Torah. So there is such a such a such a concept of uh, of making it clear, communicating with your children. So just uh, just a thought that maybe that's the uh, the reason the Gemara is emphasizing. Now, the next Gemara is where we started talking about <coughs> the um, the laws of the bracha on wine, and the uh, the, the bracha on wine. The Gemara starts out telling us that what is the reason why wine has a special bracha So the Gemara says, it's, uh, it, if you're going to tell me because it's unique, because it changes for the better, therefore the bracha changes, uh, then why is oil 
uh, different, it also changes for the better. Now, I'm not sure who it was, maybe uh, I think it was Ezra who mentioned yesterday, or, or maybe Susan mentioned about the, uh, the, uh, the wine is used for a type of sacrifice, and the oil is used for uh, also a sacrifice. So maybe that's the meaning of the Gemara, that the wine is unique, and the Gemara is asking, but oil is also unique. In other words, what does it mean that it changed for the better? Is it because it's going to be used for a for a sacrifice? Is that what it means? It gets changed that from gets changed from a grape and from just being a regular fruit, and then from a grape it gets turned into wine, and wine is used to pour on the altar uh, on a, a daily basis. And also the um, the oil is used on the altar as well. Someone wanted to say that, and I, I told them that I didn't really find any source, although it sounds good, but it didn't. I didn't see any source. Ezra, was that? I don't know if that was. If you mentioned that, I don't know. Anyway, whatever it was, I did find. Baruch Hashem, we found a Pnei Yeshua that at the end he gives a whole different explanation. But then at the end he says that um, that maybe you could say this: that the greatness, the uniqueness of wine is that it has a tzad mizbeach that it's poured as a libation. And, um, and therefore the Gemara asks, but wine also, it's used on the Mizbeach for the uh, Menachis, for the, for, the, for, the, for the carbon Mincha, that you use it also for the, for the Menachis. In other words, it changes into oil. So it also should be, in a, the, the olive oil is used on the altar as a sacrifice. The, the, all the, uh, the Mincha offering, the, the meal offerings have, have oil. So therefore, uh, there would be, uh, so that might be, uh, that's like an additional reason the, uh, the Pnei Yeshua wants to explain, maybe that's the meaning of the Gemara. Now, um, the simple meaning of the Gemara is that, it, that it, it simply changes for a better, it's a better product. The, the wine that comes out of uh, grapes is better than the wine, than the grapes itself. And the Gemara understands that the oil is a better is better than the oil itself, and therefore the Gemara is bothered by the fact that why doesn't oil get its own bracha, get a special bracha uh, for itself? And uh, the, initially, the Gemara wants to say that oil doesn't get a special bracha for itself because, uh, like a technical problem, the wording is a little different. There are certain trees in Hebrew, that the same name for the fruit is the tree. Like, for example, te'ena. Te'ena could mean a fig tree. It could also mean a fig. The same thing as zayas. Zayas means a, uh, it could mean an olive. It could also mean the olive tree. So if you say bayre pri ha uh, like you say bayre pri ha so if you would say that bracha, there is a little problem because People are going to think that you mean that God created the oil from the olive. And really, a person created the oil from the olive. God created the olive. God created the olive from the olive tree. God created the olive tree from the earth. God created all that, but the person really made the olive oil. And so therefore, if you would say, Bere Pri Hazayas, it would give the implication that you're saying a bracha, thanking Hashem for the fruit that comes out, the produce that comes out from the olive, meaning the olive oil. You're thanking Hashem for creating the olive oil. And that is not exactly uh, correct. It's really a person was involved in, in making the, from the olive to olive oil. So uh, the bracha, the wording of the bracha wouldn't work. So therefore, you don't have a special bracha, but by a, by a, a grapes and wine, that does work because you could say pri ha gofen, because gofen only means vine and it does not mean the grape. And therefore, this is God created the fruit of the vine. That does work. So if you would say created the produce of the zayas, that would be a problem. But creating the produce of the vine of the gofen, that is not a problem. Now, uh, the Gemara then says, okay, but we, we, could, we, we do have a way to word it better. There is a way to word it a little differently, and that is, so you could find a way to word it properly. 
So in other words, you could say who creates the fruit of the olive tree. You just add an extra word. So the Gemara says, yeah, I guess there, there is a, an option in the wording. That's, so that's not going to be the reason why olive oil does not have a special bracha. So we're trying to figure out, so why does olive oil uh, get a special, why does olive oil uh, not have a special bracha? And wine does. Now, the Gemara is a little unclear if the Gemara means the Gemara is now going to say a different a, a, another pointer and that is that wine is Zion. Wine sustains and oil does not sustain. It's called Zon, Zion. It's a uh, it, 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 it gives some type of a sustenance to the person. So now we know that the main sustenance of a person, according to the Gemara, I know all the, um, the latest uh, uh, medical science claims that uh, people don't need uh, grain and it's uh, gluten-free. But according to the Gemara, uh, the five grains are the main sustenance. And the, uh, the five grains are wheat, barley, oats, rye and spelt. Those are five grains. According to the Gemara, those are what's called mazoi. Those are real, the sustenance. Those are the, the source, of, the real source of sustenance is those. But the Gemara acknowledges that everything else, that other, uh, you know, there are other items that give sustenance. They, they might not be the main uh, source of sustenance, but they do give sustenance. And, um, and the Gemara says that what it, Maybe the difference, uh, the, the uniqueness of wine is that wine it, it gives sustenance and olive oil doesn't give sustenance. Now, is this a new reason or is the Gemara's reason or original reason also valid in conjunction with this? The Gemara initially said that Grapes have changed for the better. That's why they're getting the special bracha. Now, is that in conjunction? Now, the problem is olives also change for the better and they don't have enough bracha. So in conjunction with the fact that grapes change for the better, and they get a special bracha, they also give sustenance. And because of that, therefore, grapes have both. They change for the better and they give sustenance. That's why it has a special bracha. Olive oil do, did change for the better, but it doesn't have, it doesn't give sustenance, at least the way the Gemara thinks now. And therefore, it's not going to have a bracha special, different than, than, it, than it normally would. But it creates, that's all regular bracha. Wine has both. It has change for the better. So that's one way of learning the Gemara. The other way of learning the Gemara is forget about the change for the better. And it's all about the fact that wine sustains and therefore it gets a special bracha. Olive oil doesn't. It seems that the commentaries want to combine the two and say that the, the way to learn the Gemara is that the first reason stands and you just add this second point to it, that, that it's the, the wine also sustains, but um, olive oil doesn't. But then the Gemara asks, but that's not exactly true. Because there is a Mishnah that talks about a person who made a vow. And when a person makes a vow against having mazoin, at least that's the word of the Mishnah. The Mishnah uses the word mazoin, which means a sustaining food. A person who vows from eating any sustaining foods, he is prohibited in consuming any food besides for salt and water. Those are the only two foods that have zero sustaining ability. And uh, the, the Gemara sees from there, well, the, the Gemara initially says, now, now, now what does this mean? Uh, those are the only foods uh, that don't have any sustaining uh, ability. But uh, Rav and Shmuel uh, said, that uh, the only food you call, you recite the bracha, is uh, the five grains. 
So that implies that the five grains um, are the only food that have sustaining ability. So the Gemara explains, no, other foods also have five, the sustaining ability. These are the main foods that have the sustaining ability. And the case where the person recited a vow, and he said a vow uh, that he was prohibiting himself from muzoin, it's not exactly he said the word muzoin, because then he would only be prohibited from the five grains. But instead, he prohibited himself from anything that's zon, that has sustaining abilities. And on that, uh, the, the Mishnah says that he's prohibited in all food items except for water and salt. So what comes out from this is that a person who, who makes such a vow, he would... Uh, it, it, it applies to all foods. That means that uh, if you want to tell me that wine sustains, you're right, but olive oil also sustains. That's what comes out from this. Olive oil also sustains. So you can't tell me wine sustains a person and olive oil doesn't because both of them obviously sustain a person. And that's why the person who made a vow would be prohibited in having olive oil, just like you would be prohibited in having wine. And, and anything else that sustains besides water and salt. So the uh, Gemara concludes and says, no, you know what it is? Not sustaining, that's not what we're dealing with. It's all about the question over here is, what satiates a person? And the Gemara says, wine satiates a person. But then the Gemara, and, and olive oil doesn't satiate a person. And therefore, what the, the reason why wine has a special bracha is because number one, it changed for the better. However, you want to learn that it changed for the better. But in additionally, additional point, but besides it changing for the better, because olive oil also changed for the better, it doesn't have a special bracha. But in addition to changing for the better, wine satiates a person. Olive oil doesn't satiate a person. And the Gemara is not satisfied with that. The Gemara says, oh, really? Wine satiates a person? On the Pesach night, there's a mitzvah to eat matzah with hunger. In fact, we just pulled up a Rambam over here. The Rambam says that a person is not allowed to eat matzah on the day before the Seder, Erev Pesach, in order that there should be recognizable his eating the matzah in the evening. And a person who eats matzah on Erev Pesach, he gets lashes, rabbinic lashes. And, a per, and it's prohibited to eat Erev Pesach before, from a little before Mincha, in order to eat matzah with hunger. But a person is allowed to have fruit or vegetables, but he shouldn't fill his stomach with them. And the rabbis used to starve themselves Erev Pesach in order to eat matzah b'tayva, with a desire, and the mitzvahs will be precious to them. It doesn't mean they actually starve themselves, but uh, uh, they, wouldn't, they, wouldn't, um, they wouldn't fast, but they would uh, limit their food intake. And other Arab yomtavs, a person could eat until evening. So uh, we, he we see here that a person should enter the eating of matzah with a taiva, with a desire. So Rava, our Gemara says that Rava used to drink wine all day before Pesach in order that it would whet his appetite for matzah. And he would eat, interesting, the wording of the Gemara is v'necho matzah tfei. He would eat mm, a lot of matzah, it would get him to eat a lot of matzah. Now, what does that mean? Is there a mitzvah to eat extra matzah? Matzah, you eat a kazayas, you fulfilled your mitzvah. This will get him to eat more matzah. So there is a uh, Avne Nezer, there's a commentary that says that you see here that even though your yaitzah, you fulfill the mitzvah with eating a kazayas, but when you eat more, it's all included, it's all included in the mitzvah of matzah. And... Um, he wanted to eat, it would get him to eat more matzah. By drinking wine, it would give him an appetite. 
But the point of our Gemara is, the main point that our Gemara is making is that drinking wine does not satiate a person. It gives a person a hunger. So the Gemara answer is, depends how much wine. If you drink a lot of wine, it gives you an appetite. If you just drink a little wine, it actually satiates you. And therefore, because wine has this quality of satiating a person, and it's, of course, it changed for the better, and it satiates a person, therefore, it has the, uh, it has this special blessing. Then the Gemara says, but we do have a verse that seems to contradict this. Ben, did you, did you want to ask something, Ben? Yeah, I wanted to add, I think wine comes in different flavors. Olive oil comes with a couple of flavors too, but you don't drink the olive oil or you don't use the olive oil for the flavors. The wine you are really picking by the flavors and they say, because you are drinking it to help you enjoy it. You're enjoying it. The olive oil you might be drinking or eating for your health, but not for special enjoyment and, and doesn't, doesn't make the holiday or whatever you use the wine for any happier by using olive oil. But it does make it happier and enjoyable by using wine. So there is a big difference between the two. That's a, that's a good point, interesting point. Um, you know, it is interesting that the Gemara, uh, I, I mean, I, I mentioned it yesterday, that is the Gemara adding this point of wine. In other words, it could be that the Gemara is mentioning your idea uh, and concluding with it, because there is a way of learning the Gemara that the conclusion of the Gemara is that wine has both it's misameach, it gives you joy, and it satiates a person. And because of both of those reasons, that's why it gets a special bracha. And I, yeah. I guess that's in addition to being um, uh, changed for the better. So your idea that it's misameach is not wrong, except that there is one commentary that wants to say that this concept of misameach is not the reason. According to him, what you're saying it might be true, but it's not the reason why it has a special bracha. But, but you know, it's not it's not wrong what you're saying. You're, what you're saying is correct. Yeah. That person might drink it for that joy, but that but that's not necessarily the reason why it has but, a special bracha. But so again, there's saying, two opinions. Yeah. One opinion is that what you're saying is the reason for the bracha is one of the yeah. reasons for that special bracha. But what you're saying about the hunger and makes him eat more matzah. If you eat more matzah, you think less about hummets, or you don't think about hummets at all if you eat enough matzah. So it helps in other ways. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Yeah. So the, uh, so, so the Gemara says that this seems to be a contradiction because the verse says that, the, that wine makes a person rejoice. And bread is what satiates a person. So the Gemara answers that it's not a contradiction because wine, in addition to satiating a person, it also makes a person happy. And so the verse is not excluding wine from satiating a person. It's adding something. In addition to satiating a person, it also makes them happy. Yesamach. Lave it makes a person's heart happy, and so that is the uh, Gemara that we where we got up to, and what comes out is wine has both. It makes uh, a, a person happy and it satiates a person. But bread in that verse it mentions bread. Bread only uh, satiates a person. It doesn't make the person happy. And uh, the Gemara asks a question on that. If wine really satiates a person, maybe he should recite the grace after meal. Because bread, you recite grace after meal, after you eat bread. Bread satiates a person. And now you're telling me wine also satiates a person. Let him say, uh, let him recite the grace after meal after wine also. 
right? You got to listen. If you're claiming that it satiates a person, then you got to stick to what you said. It satiates a person. You should recite the grace after meal. Now, the Gemara uses the term for a grace after meal, the blessing of three, the three blessings, because the grace after meal initially had three blessings to it. The rabbis added a fourth blessing in the second century when the Haruge Beitar, those that were killed in Beitar during the destruction of the temple and afterwards during the wars that the Bar Kokhba fought. So the um, people of Beitar, they, they were uh, murdered by the Romans and uh, they were not allowed to be buried for 15 years. And after 15 years, the, the Romans were so angry at us because we, we, we kept them in war for years upon years uh, and they could never conquer us. They were just, we were just constantly uh, um, uh, causing, being a source of, uh, of, of problems for them. Of course, they, they, they destroyed our temple and they exiled us, but we, we never gave up. And uh, because of that, they didn't let us bury our dead for 15 years. And Hashem made a great miracle that the dead bodies that were piled up for 15 years, they did not decompose. And so we recite, we added to the, to the grace after meal, a bracha, that Hashem did this good, kind miracle that he didn't let the, the bodies decompose and he let them be buried. And, um, uh, 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 and so we added a fourth bracha, but the Gemara still calls the uh, benching, grace after meal, the blessing of three. And I should say that the Gemara also calls the uh, al hamichya blessing after you have cake and after you have uh, uh, foods of the seven species. Uh, the, 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 the blessing that the Gemara uses for that is called the bracha me'en shalish. It's an abbreviation of the three. So there's the three blessings, which is we call grace after meal, birchas hamazin. They call it the bracha of three. And the al hamichya bracha, we call it al hamichya or Allah eights, uh, Allah Geffen, they call it, the, the Gemara, it's called Bracha Me'en Shalosh, Bracha, the abridged three, because that Bracha combines all three blessings of the original Bracha Samazin, they combine it into three Bracha, into, into one Bracha, they combine the three Brachas into one, so it's a Bracha Me'en, similar to the three, it's one Bracha, similar to the three, and uh, okay, so now let's read the Gemara inside, Ihachi, let me tell you where we're, where we're holding, we are um, towards the end of the page, um, Ihachi. Ihachi is uh, seven lines up, eight lines up from the bottom of the page. Eight lines up from the bottom of the page. We're on 35B. Ihachi, if so, that it sustains a person. If so, Nivrach Alei Shalish Brachis. Let's say the grace after meal. Yeah, if you're telling me that wine sustains a person, then you should recite the grace after meal, the three brachas. The Gemara answers, like a person does not establish their meal on wine. That's not a way a person establishes a meal. You're hungry? Oh, come over. I'm going to give you wine. You don't make a meal. I, I haven't eaten all day. Okay, come over. I'll give you wine. You have a, you have a meal. I have a meal for you. You're going to have wine. That's not a way a person establishes a meal. Uh, a person could drink wine, fine. You could even satisfy your hunger a little. But it's not a, it's the person doesn't establish a meal. Now, the berchus hamazain, the grace after meals, is supposed to be on something that the regular person, uh, regular person establishes a meal on bread. So bread is something that people establish a meal on. Therefore, that is considered a reason to recite Berchus HaMazin on bread. But because most people don't establish a meal on, on wine, it doesn't, uh, it, uh, we don't say the grace after meal on wine. Now, Amalei Rav Nachman, Bar Yitzchak L'Rav, Ikava Ilave Su If a person did establish their meal on wine, my, what would the law be? Should he recite the grace after meal? If a person was a little off, a little uh, strange, they would, and they did decide it, a little eccentric. They, they have a meal. Oh, we get together. We're having our dinner. Tonight dinner is wine. That's it. If someone wants to do that, 
would they recite a uh, erase after meal after the one? So Amar Le, so Rava answered Rav Nachman Bar Yitzchak, look sheyavai Elio. When Elio comes, maybe v'yoymar, and I'll say he have your kviyusa. He'll tell us if that's considered a kviyus, a established uh, thing. We'll know for sure. When he comes, we'll be able to, we, we, we can't establish it and say it's, a, it's considered an established meal. It's not the norm. But if when Elio comes, maybe he'll tell us that this is considered an established meal. In the meantime, hashto now, miha, however, badla daita yetzo kolado. This person who establishes a meal on wine, his view is nullified amongst everyone, and therefore you do not recite the grace after meal on, on wine. Now, uh, what I mentioned, uh, mentioned yesterday that the question is about grape juice. Grape juice is an interesting uh, uh, discussion because uh, depending on how you learn this Gemara, the Gemara either concludes that wine is unique it gets a special bracha, what would the conclusion be? Why is wine unique and why does it get the special bracha? It changed for the better, but olive oil also changed for the better. So the Gemara definitely concluded this point that it sustains. That was a conclusion, one of the conclusions of the Gemara. Wine sustains a person. Maybe if he drinks a, a, drinks a lot, it doesn't, but if he drinks uh, some, some wine, it does sustain a person, and therefore, um, uh, the, the blessing for wine, for wine is special, special bracha, bari pri hagafa, not bari pri ha'etz. But the Gemara also mentioned that wine is misameach, and it has both. Wine has both. It's so'id, it's sustain, it, it, and I, I said the wrong word, I'm sorry. It, not that it sustains a person, it satiates a person. Take that back. Wine satiates a person. That's definitely the conclusion of the Gemara. Wine satiates a person. Now, wine satiates a person, uh, therefore gets a special bracha. Now, the Gemara also concludes and says that wine has both. Not only does it satiate a person, it also is misameach a person. It makes a person rejoice and is happy. So is that part of the reason why there's a special bracha for wine? Or is that just a fact that it fits the verse? When the verse talks about wine and mentions happiness, because that's a fact, part, but it's not necessarily connected to the reason wine has the special bracha. There are two ways of learning, our Gemara. Now, if you learn that it has to do with only the fact that wine satiates a person, then there's no question that grape juice could also be in the same category. And we sort of have, we have a Gemara. The Gemara says, that the person before Shabbos, if they squeeze grapes, what happened? What do you do if you don't have any grape juice or wine for Shabbos? What do you do? You're traveling, you're in uh, China, they have no kosher wine in the store. What do you do? So, yes, Yehuda? On Friday night, <clears throat> you make the kiddush over the challahs, and on uh, Shabbos, uh, Shabbos morning, you can make it on vodka. Any, well, I was going to say any alcoholic beverage. Right. But there is what happens if you don't have challah either or matzah? So you want to recite Kiddush on Friday night. The Gemara says that there is a way to do it. You could buy grapes and squeeze them. You press them just like you squeeze a. Uh, Orange juice sometimes, you could squeeze an orange, it takes a while, but you will be able to squeeze some grapes into a small cup, five, four, even four ounce, three ounces maybe even, according to the smallest view, three ounces. You take uh, two pounds of grapes, you'll easily, uh, you should easily get, uh, you know, grape juice. Uh, and you can do that, you can make Kiddush. The Gemara says this, you could make Kiddush by squeezing grapes into a cup. In Va'imer, all of Kiddush, you could say Kiddush. What do you see from there? that you could recite Kiddush on, now you can't do this on Shabbos, before Shabbos you squeeze it. On Shabbos, you're not allowed to squeeze. But before Shabbos, you squeeze the grapes, grapes into, 
into a cup. And then uh, Friday night, you have Kiddush, you're all set. So we do see that you recite a Bari Priya Gafen on grape juice. However, and that fits very well with our Gemara, if you learn that the reason of our Gemara is because that wine satiates a person, grape juice also satiates a person, obviously. Now, the only thing is, if you learn the Gemara, that it's not only that it satiates a person, it makes a person happy. So why would the bracha on wine be the same for grape juice? Grape juice doesn't uh, make a person happy. Why, how would you be able to do that? So you have to learn that the reason why the Gemara says that is because this grape juice has the ability, if you leave it, it's, 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 it has the potential to make a person happy if you were to, uh, uh, you know, uh, ferment it. And therefore, it's considered like wine. It's considered good enough. And, um, and, and because of that, you can recite a Barpia Goffin. Now, there is a problem. And the problem is, you know what happens nowadays? Nowadays, they pasteurize the grape juice. Cool. The grape juice cannot be fermented. When you drink grape juice in your house, the grape juice has no potential to ferment. Uh, and therefore, it is questionable. Maybe we should not be reciting on grape juice. Because the Mish, the Gemara that talks about squeezing grapes into your cup and saying, Kiddush, that's fine. Because that grape juice can be made into wine. But the grape juice that you buy in the store cannot be made into wine. It never will be made into wine because it's impossible for it to, to, it's pasteurized. Not only is it pasteurized, I think some, they might even add some chemical that can't make it ferment. I don't know if that's a legal reason. They, they Maybe because they don't want, if it ferments, it'll be considered alcoholic and could have, I don't know. But for whatever reason, the, the grape juice that we buy, you can't, uh, so it's questionable about reciting the Bar Priya uh, Some of the commentaries want to say that since before they pasteurized it, so the reason why we, we recite a Bari Priya Goffin, this seems to be the reason, is because before they pasteurized it, it was capable of, uh, it did have the bracha of Bari Priya Goffin on it then. After they pasteurized it or they added some chemical to it, afterwards it doesn't lose that bracha because it didn't get ruined so much. It didn't get, because of that, it didn't, you know, it, it, it doesn't lose that, doesn't lose that bracha once it had it, once it was given to it, once we gave it the bracha of Berpia Goffin, it doesn't lose it. But there are those that are machmir, they don't like to make kiddush on grape juice. And, uh, and even if they do make kiddush on grape juice, they try to add at least a quarter of it should be wine mixed in. Because if you mix a quarter of it, wine mixed in, it's like in the olden days, they would water down the wine. And uh, it was a quarter wine and three quarters water. So now you have grape juice, uh, at least you have a quarter of it wine. So that's why a lot of people are trying to be careful to drink, uh, to, to, uh, to recite Kiddush on wine. But if you do use grape juice, maybe mix a quarter of it wine. Or, um, of course, the best way to use grape juice would be to squeeze your own and uh, not have uh, the, the, the issue at all. Um, but uh, obviously the halacha is that it's fine. Grape juice is acceptable. I mean, everyone seems, it, it does seem to be the accepted halacha. I know Reb Moshe Feinstein was machmir not to use grape juice for Kiddush. But uh, the common accepted, uh, accepted uh, halacha is that, uh, that it is, uh, grape juice is okay. But the, the, the real question is not only about making Kiddush, it seems to be the bracha itself, that the bracha, should be bari pri hagafen, so which which is interesting that this this uh, this could be a, a question of reciting the bracha again. It depends on our gemara. The gemara that we learned is the source. Is it because of misameach or is it because of chamra is soyed? So it really boils down to our gemara that we learned. Yes, uh, Ben. Yeah, 